You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another heavy set podcast of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. <laughs> My name is Rob. This is episode seven. Three zero seven hundred and thirty. Thank you for hanging out with us today. What does heavy set podcast well, mean? We're talking about heavy big drones. All right, so I it's thought a heavy so. Heavy set I just podcast. Wanted to make sure. Well, actually, I was talking about the size of my belly, <laughs> which is uh, also heavy set. Yeah. Hope Tom gets a kick out of that one. Anyway, uh, we are excited today. We're going to be talking about what if a drone is over fifty five pounds. What should you uh, What should you do to fly that thing commercially? It'll be a quick show, as the answer is pretty simple. But um, we will be going over that today. Big special thank you to our friends, colleagues, members, and students of the Drone U community. If you want to become a member of the Drone U and get access to over 27 classes, resources, and so much more, you've got to become a member. Just go to thedroneu.com where you will have constant access to a community who can not only answer your questions, but you'll also have constant access to continually learn and better your skills, or as I say, elevate your experience. Mm -hmm. All right, Rob, let's hear this question so we can burn through this show. Hey, Paul. Hey, Rob. Kevin from New Jersey. I had a question about UAVs above 55 pounds. At this point, I don't see anything that there's a certification or anything like that you can get to fly them when they're above 55 pounds. But say you're an engineer and you're working on patents or you're working on uh, designs for various SAR systems and whatnot, um, maybe rescue over water, and your all-up weight ends up being over 55 pounds. Um, I guess technically your Part 107 doesn't really cover you if you start flying things with an all-up weight over 55 pounds. Is there any talk of a certification for flying UASs above 55 pounds? Um, Is there anything that covers you now that I don't know about? I'm just wondering. Thanks. All right, Ken, thanks again for your question. Thank you for all the questions you send in. Really do appreciate it. All good, thoughtful questions. Um, not a lot of people are out there flying drones over 55 pounds, I would imagine. Those that are probably know exactly what they need to do. At least I would hope so, because like there's going to be some big birds. Yeah, like like an Intel. Like an Intel taxi drone that they showed at CES. Oh, really? Yeah, that was their opening Would you act. ride in it? <laughs> Did no. somebody ride in it? No way. No, no one rode in it. All right. No, I would not do that. Yeah. Sorry. No, I wouldn't either. I, I think that's crazy. I'm, I'm not an early adopter with something that's going to potentially take my life. Call me crazy. Let me ask you a question. Uh-oh. It's going to get deep. We're in the day and age of horses and carriages, walking and jogging. If you're lucky, maybe a bicycle. And the, the first vehicle rolls around. Are you going to get in it and drive it? Yeah. I think so. It's 2020 though. I know. I agree. But you're on the ground and you're going about three miles an hour. They didn't go very fast. Right. I mean, so even if they bumped into each other, you might bruise your knee. I mean, I think, and I think you could probably discern these kinds of things at the time. So are you saying that these Intel drones should fly five feet over the ground and go 10 miles an hour? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that that were, those were the circumstances for um, the picture that you just painted. It was very different in terms of the actual risk associated. Now, I understand perception, wow. you know, I'm pretending like I was there. And, and so you're right. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Maybe I would have felt a lot different if I was actually there. I'm sure I would have felt different. It's just to what extent. Now, getting in something that is supposed to fly, and by the way, it's autonomous, right? I mean, that you're not correct. even actually flying it. That is correct. So you're relying on the computer to do whatever it's supposed to do to get you to wherever you need to go safely, and you're relying on batteries that, well, I don't, we all know how long those seem to last, and maybe they're different batteries in that particular bird, but nonetheless... Number of cycles is what always What if I've got to go 40 minutes and it says, you have 50 minutes on this battery, and then it actually ends up being 38 minutes on that battery? That's possible. There's just so many different issues with um, doing something like this. So that long rambling statement, are you getting in the drone or not? <laughs> I already said no. Okay. <laughs> I thought we opened with that. Okay. Well, just clarifying. 
Well, anyway. <laughs> and uh, of all the people to accuse someone of rambling. <laughs> what are you trying to say here, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, well, let's get to today's question because obviously we know that Rob won't be in any drones that are flying that are over 55 pounds. Well, not yet. I mean, we got to see what happens. But anyways, we already listened to the question. So what does the FAA say about... We did? I, I yeah, just, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm not in, a, in the game right now. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Um, okay, so if you are trying to fly a drone that's it. more than 55 pounds, um, Part 107 is only applicable to unmanned aircraft that weigh less than 55 pounds. At takeoff, that includes all attached things, cameras, gimbals, everything, the battery, everything that would you would need to take off and fly... Uh, if you want to fly a drone that's over 55 pounds, operators will have to use the existing Section 333 exemption process. But I also believe you may have to get the aircraft certified as well. Um, uh, normally with manned aircraft, you need a... Um, what is it? Oh, I'm losing my mind here. Um, you need an aircraft certification uh, unless it's an experimental aircraft. So I'm not sure if you would need a certification. My hunch says you would. Again, I think this is something that would be really helpful to reach out to your local FISO if you want to fly a drone that's over 55 pounds. Hmm. My question, though, is if you are flying a drone that is over 55 pounds, what are you flying? You know, yeah. I know some people have said, oh, well, you could fly dual red cameras. That would be sick. That would be sick, but that'd be like a team of five people and how flying much money? one drone. We're talking a couple hundred grand for something Probably like that? a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. Well, more power to you yeah. if you're doing that. Yeah. You're uh, probably putting together your own feature films at that point. So question for you. So prior to 107, there was the whole debate about Section 333 and whether or not it was actually necessary and applicable right to a pilot. Did It's funny, that debate just kind of vanished. Oof. Bye-bye. Went away when 107 came, but it seems like, not, not that I'm trying to poke the hornet's nest here, but I don't know what changed relative to the 333's applicability. Did something change, is what I'm asking? Um, supposedly, they're only applicable to drones that weigh 55 pounds or more. In November of 2016, the FAA removed the... Um, MPTOMs. So if you are flying drones for videography under the 333 process using the MPTOM, that kind of was negated in November of last year. Mm. Um, last year, two years ago. Now that I think about it, wow, it's two years. Um, but um, the 333 is not really, I mean, you know, the FAA has kind of pushed everyone away from the 333s unless it is specific to drones over 55 pounds. Right. Because there is now like a process to go through with part 107 like there's a system and we all know that the faa was completely overburdened with 333s i mean you remember our 333 they were like are you sure you want to still do this because part 107 is on the horizon like blah 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 you remember all that oh yeah i remember that so um anyway yeah okay so even back then you would have agreed that a 333 was necessary if your drone was over 55 pounds yes okay that's that's really the point that is important to my question. So So you're asking, is a 333 still valid if your drone is over 55 pounds? Yeah, so all of the debate back in the day before 107 was for drones under 55 pounds as right. to whether or not you needed a 333 to fly commercially. Yes. All right, cool. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I'm making Paul tired. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that is going to do it for us today on this super simple question. Here for Ask Drone You. If you have a difficult question, one focused around business, hmm? mapping, industry-specific questions, augmenting your existing business, then please let us hear your questions. Just go to askdroneyou.com and upload your question. I would love to hear some accents, make it fun. Making things fun is definitely a better way to do everything. So yes. But anyway, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Hey.